Hey, and welcome back. Uh, in this video, in what I guess we could kind of refer to as the, the advanced series, uh, we're going to talk about alternatives or different ways uh, that we can create contacts and motion between entities. And we addressed the two main ways that we're going to do that in the previous uh, motion video, where we discussed uh, the use of contacts. Uh, in this case, the contact would be defined between the gears. So I would have uh, a contact defined between this gear and this gear. And then as they began to uh, touch each other, that would cause the motion. Another, op or another option would be the couplers, and we discussed couplers where uh, I can come through and uh, I can select these two entities, uh, in particular the joints that, uh, that allow them to, to revolve around these posts here. And then that would allow me to couple those two joints together, and a specific or prescribed motion in this would then result in a specific motion in that. Uh, so we talked about that, and uh, you can see here that, you know, I can come through and create contacts, so I can say, okay, I want this contacting uh, this, and then I can create that contact, and we'll leave everything as default, and then I can come here and analyze motion. You see it takes a couple of seconds to set up, and then as the motion begins, uh, we get that, uh, that uh, contact between the two, which drives the, the gears, and so that's an actual physical definition of behavior between them. Uh, and I could go through and continue to add contacts uh, to these. And in doing so, it would add analysis time or the time it's going to take to analysis. You'll see here if I now say, okay, I want this one and this one and create that contact. And then uh, I want this one and this one and create that contact. When I come here and I run the motion, you see... Now we're going to pause and we're going to wait a little bit and then it will finally begin and it's going to, uh, a little slower than before, begin to, to run the, uh, the actual analysis. So again, I'm getting great motion out of it, uh, but it is computationally expensive. We're going to have uh, more time on the setup and then we're going to have more time on the analysis. And as I have always stated in any of my motion uh, classes or in any of my motion videos, the simpler you can make your model, but still maintain uh, the realistic behavior of it, the better you're going to be. Uh, the quicker it's going to be to set up, the quicker it's going to be to run the analysis, and the less opportunities for things to go wrong. So let me leave this and come here, and let's remove the, uh, the motion contacts. Let me delete those. And uh, previously we talked about couplers. And couplers allow you to couple joints together, uh, hinge joints uh, to hinge joint, uh, translational to translational, hinge to translational. It's going to couple joints together. And the typical way that we go about doing that is we select a joint, and then we select another joint, and it will automatically create the, the behavior between them. So scale 1, 360, scale 2, 360, you see now if I come here and I run this analysis for every one turn of this, I get one turn of that. And we're completely ignoring any contact. This is not contact-based, so it's able to pass through. It's just relating the motion between these two, which, of course, we know is wrong. I have a larger gear here and a smaller gear here. We're not going to see a one-to-one -one ratio. So to uh, adjust that, I'd need to come here. And I need to have some sort of familiarity with my uh, with my gears. Um, I know that this is a 20 tooth gear and this is a 10 tooth gear. So I could come down here and uh, split this in half. So I could say 180. And then come and analyze the motion. And as you can see, I did it backwards. So uh, I need to come here. And flip this around, so 180 to 360, and that should now work right. There we go. So now I get the, the proper behavior, uh, where for every 180 degrees, or for every 360 degrees of this, uh, or 360 degrees, 180 degrees of this, I get 360 of there, and that's going to give me my 2 to 1 gear ratio. Uh, but, of course, I had to know the, the teeth, and I had to go through and, and define that manually. But a lesser known and really, really powerful 
feature within uh, Inspire when it comes to creating uh, coupling between gears. If I come here to couplers, and instead of the, standard, the default by joints, if I change this to at free joints, what it's actually going to do is it's going to take a look at things that can be coupled together based upon the free joints between them. And now all I have to do is come here and click create all. It cr automatically created a coupler for each one of these two. And you'll notice that the coupler says scale one, 10 degrees, scale two, 20 degrees. There is actually geometric functionality within Inspire to go through and count the teeth on the gears. So it knows that this is a 20 tooth gear and this is a 10 tooth gear and each one of these are 20 versus 10. And so while we don't have the way uh, or a manner of describing 10 teeth versus 20 teeth, that's the same thing as saying 10 degrees versus 20 degrees. So that's how I defined it based upon the tooth count in there. Now, if I run it, it instantly begins analysis. Uh, there's no setup time necessary. And very quickly, I'm going to get my results here. And that was all automatically set up. So it looks like I'm getting contact between the two, which is what I want. But that's only because it's describing this as a, uh, a 10 degree rotation versus a, a 20 degree rotation here. Uh, and that's going to get that. If the teeth didn't line up, if say I were to come here and grab this tooth or this gear and rotate it slightly so the teeth didn't line up, uh, the motion analysis would still work perfectly fine. This has absolutely nothing to do with the actual graphics. Uh, the teeth can pass through each other, but I get the exact same uh, the exact same behavior. Uh, particularly useful when you're working with uh, CAD data that's maybe not of the highest quality. And anyone who's taken a look at uh, CAD data with a, a large number of gears in it, uh, you quite frequently will get uh, will get tooth penetration, uh, things don't line up exactly perfectly. So uh, this is an alternative way of, uh, oops, let me not turn it. This is an alternative way of getting that to work without having perfect geometric uh, behavior there. Now, one last thing I wanna show you here. So I'm gonna come here and let me delete my couplers. Uh, is another uh, really kind of cool way of, of developing this. Uh, if I come here to my couplers, make sure I'm on free joints. Uh, as we showed, I, I only have the option of creating them all. Uh, and we haven't discussed this, but uh, you'll see this occur in, in numerous functions within Inspire. We call this kind of our, our tour mode. I believe they refer to it as tour mode. Uh, the tour mode will, if I select that, you see it will go to one of the six options and highlight that. And I could create it and then it would leave. And uh, I could come back here and go to tour mode again, which it goes to the first one. So I could go through and manually create each one. But another not very well known function within Inspire is if I go into the tour mode here, and as opposed to creating it manually or click create all, which would create everything, if I hold my control key down and click create all, it will create that one and then automatically advance to the next one. And I can go through and create each of these individually. The advantage of course being that uh, I'm going to be able to individually see each coupler as I create it. So it's gonna give me a lot more knowledge about my part as opposed to just kind of arbitrarily creating all of them, which in this case would work perfectly fine. But it's another alternative that allows you to tour your model and create it without having to continually go in and out and in and out of, of, of the couplers. And now, of course, I've got the exact behavior of my model that I wanted. It is much more mathematically uh, efficient uh, and analytically efficient. It's going to run faster, less opportunities for failure, but I get the exact behavior I want. Again, there's nothing wrong with going through and doing this through contacts. It's just why overcomplicate the model when that's not going to be necessary. If I needed to know things like stress at the tooth contact, then of course I would use the, the contacts. But this is an alternative that you have. 
and a rapid alternative to create uh, many connections at once where it will automatically determine the, ra the gear ratio between the two. It also saves you the time of having to go through and count the teeth if you don't know them offhand. So, uh, like I said, a little bit more advanced, uh, and we're going to use some of these videos to highlight some features within Inspire that uh, maybe a lot of people don't know about. So hopefully you found this useful, and uh, keep looking for future videos.